All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the round five edition of Just the Tips. I'm joined once again. By... I'm Druzy. Yeah, okay, nice. Druzy, it was an upsetting round of football for myself as an Eagles fan. Although in tipping, I think I did my best round yet, but I am filthy. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm in a shower. Yeah, I am stinking in multiple ways. But the uh, most prominent of which is at my tipping because I confidently tipped Carlton last week. And it turns out on the app, I've accidentally clicked Gold Coast. So I only scored a mere six this week. Uh, and you scored seven, you filthy pig, which elevates you. As we look at the rankings, you are 26 correct tips this year, which is just disgusting. I think the, the leader is on 28. So you're sitting in the top 10. You're eighth in the total rankings. That's unreal. That is filthy. And I'm actually sitting down at 313th, so just behind you, with uh, 19 <laughs> correct tips, which I'm filthy about. It should be 20, but uh, no one here is bitter. By far the best I've ever done, eh? Like, yeah. just getting sevens every week. It's yeah. not bad. I think everyone would have got seven this week. No one yeah. would have tipped Collingwood to lose. Or, or West Coast St. Kilda was a bit of a 50-50 for some people, but seven I'll take every week. Yeah, getting sevens every week, uh, both in tipping and in your personal life. I'm not getting sevens, mate. I'm getting zeros. I'm getting fucking blank. Someone help. Message me, please. We will shout out Dad Watch as well, who's not going quite as well as he thought he might have last year. I think he finished with a top five finish, but he's sitting at 92nd, still smashing me out of the park. He's got 24 correct tips, but it doesn't matter. I think as long as Dad's beating me, he is going to be smug. Before we get into the tips, we will acknowledge the people who are killing it at the top of this true footy footy tipping competition you can find the links and invite stuff for all that in the description of this video but uh big bam Fogarty was the round four winner with eight correct tips so no one scored a perfect nine uh but he also got a margin of four so outstanding tipping and also the total leader is friend of the show logan horton he's been around with true footy for a while now he's a diehard st kilda fan probably hates that i struggle to tip them every week but this week he'll be very happy for two reasons his team got up against the deplorable eagles and he is leading with 28 and a margin of 81 so that is just fantastic and the fantasy comp is headed by a team called you gonna cry which sounds daunting uh sean core is averaging 19.99 which is you know really good going for early in the season i'm getting about 1700 a week at best so um yeah less about how much i suck at all the competitions i'm running and of course, we do need to shout out the sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com. They have elite male grooming products. Uh, I use the products myself. They're fantastic. And you get 20% off and free shipping on their products if you use the code TRUEFORTY20, all caps, all one word. Shave your balls, you filthy animals. All right, as we have a look at round five, Drewsy, it looks like there's a couple of tough tips coming up. And uh, no, I'm not talking about Daniel Bush's SDI situation. We're going to start off at the round St. Kilda versus Richmond. I think this is actually a bit of a doozy. I know you don't quite respect mm. St. Kilda in the way <laughs> that uh, other people do, but I think they made a bit of a statement on the weekend. Uh, Jack Steele was uh, probably one of the best on ground, if not the best. And Max King was probably the only other candidate kicking five goals as well. Yes, sir. As they completely overrun um, an Eagles side that just stopped. But um, in, from a St. Kilda's perspective, they'll, uh, they'll be pretty pleased because they needed to make a statement after a really bad round three performance. And that's just the nature of the season. We're seeing Jekyll and Hyde performances. One round, people look, or teams look terrible. And then the next, they, they come back. So coming up against Richmond, who put in, you'd have to say, a good performance against Port away. Mm -hmm. um, Port where had a few injuries at the end, but Richmond couldn't quite overcome them. But uh, like we said in the Drew Footy show, Port Adelaide away is one of the toughest trips in football. So St. Kilda did upset Richmond last year. Can they take the momentum this week and do it again? Potentially, but Richmond off the back of two losses. I think they'll be really up and about for this game, really firing. St. Kilda looks good in that second half, but if Richmond can control that second half burst, which West Coast couldn't, I think they'll just ride the game out. I think they'll win quite comfortably by 22 points. I see this one as tough to tip because I think St. Kilda match up, up well on Richmond and they're carrying a lot of momentum into this game. But, but I'm going to tip for Richmond. I am going to tip Richmond. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know I never tip St. Kilda, but they do have a hard fixture. Yeah. They do. And so that's why I haven't tipped them that much so far. Um, and I did tip them against Essendon and they really rubbed my nose in that. So, and you tip West Coast. Yeah, I know. So you haven't been getting St. Kilda right at all. I haven't been getting anyone right, bro. I'm going to tip Richmond by 10 points. Next up, we have Friday night, West Coast versus Collingwood. On paper at the start of the season, this would have looked like a real blockbuster, at least in my eyes. Um, one of the games I'm probably more ex excited to actually attend. I will be vlogging it. Uh, but on current form, Drews, both of these sides looking pretty average. As I said, West Coast overrun by St. Kilda. They put up a decent fight in the first half. Well, they got a 32-point lead through, you know, really efficient uh, play in the forward half. But the run in the legs just wasn't there and the effort level was pretty deplorable. Coming up against Collingwood, who equally would be really disappointed losing at home by five goals to a team. Everyone had written off uh, people calling for Leon Cameron's head. So to lose that was an absolute pig of a result as well. Both teams need to respond. Yes. Who's going to do it this week? West Coast at home. Well, it's always a hard fixture to call this one because Collingwood have come over here multiple times and won. 
Um, but West Coast have done a business on Collingwood multiple times as well. Collingwood haven't shown me anything this season, to be honest. One win against Carlton isn't cutting it, and their big players are doing the best they can. They've got a lot of stars, but it's just not clicking at Collingwood. And I think West Coast, in that first half against St Kilda, looked really good, and I'm sure that consistency will be a talking point all week for them, and maintaining that intensity and quality all throughout the four quarters, and being at home at Optus. I don't know who you're going to tip, but I'm going to tip West Coast, winning by 31 points. Yeah, that's a pretty convincing win. This is a tough one. This is the sort of game West Coast would come out and flat track um, and respond after a bad loss. I the, My main concern is just that they look physically exhausted on mm. the field, so it's hard to respond if you're physically not quite right and I don't know if that's the case that's just the eye test I'm going to tip West Coast yes I will tip West Coast um, because I think well Tyler Adams is also out for 10 weeks which um, sort of He's been their best this season. Yeah, exactly. He's one of the best players for sure. And that kind of takes away the the midfield ascendancy, which you'd say Collingwood definitely have on paper. So I'm going to back my boys in. West Coast going to win by 22 points. You've been out of it all week. All weekend after that loss. I'm like, I'm not tipping West yeah, Coast. Eh? <laughs> I know, but I've only got them one correct tip this year. So um, I'll show a bit of faith. Yeah. I would not be surprised if we lose, but I'll back us in. Yeah. Next up, we have the Bulldogs versus Gold Coast. Fairly one-sided fixture on paper. Uh, this time at Marvel Stadium. Uh, as you noted in the Drew footy show, Dogs have really lifted their physical pressure in, the, in that last game against Brisbane. I think they tackled 99 times in the first three rounds and then 81 times uh, against the Lions. So they really came to play and added a real tough edge to what is already Tackles. outstanding midfield. They did get the job done fairly comfortably last week uh, at Mars Stadium against the Lions, who brought a fairly decent challenge. But ultimately, yeah, the Dogs were clearly too good. They don't have uh, Caleb Daniel this week. He's been rubbed out for a week after a, you know, what was a pretty poor performance. And then the Suns um, got done by Carlton at home, which was uh, a bit of a blow. So I think they will come with the right mindset of still trying to push for that win that's been uh, elusive. I've, I think they've had one this year. So um, all in all, who are you thinking? Is there any chance that the Suns upset the Dogs here? Here's my footy analysis for you, Jesse. Gold Coast aren't getting results. Western Bulldogs are getting results. Western Bulldogs will get the result. Western Bulldogs win by 37 points. Yeah, I think that sums it up pretty much as good as anything. I noticed the Dogs haven't left Victoria yet as well, and they've played three interstate sides after this round. So um, Classic Victoria bias, bro, eh? That's not what I'm getting at, but I think <laughs> uh, I think the lack of travel will probably mean they're... I think they're physically in good shape at the moment. I think they're going to win by, yeah, 36 points. Nice. Next up, we have a... What do they call it? Battle of the Bridge. They still call it that, don't they? Sydney versus GWS at the SCG. Uh, the Swans uh, withstood a very good challenge from Essendon last week. A yes. very impressive performance uh, on a, by a team who's been you know, all over the place, frankly, Essendon. But he's back in the side, kicked three goals. They're not travelling, so you'd think he plays again. And the youngsters are still doing really well. Chad Warner was um, prominent again last week. Uh, and the Giants, uh, as we said, um, came up against the Collingwood side, who's almost season was on the line like they, yeah. they still have plenty to play for but the yeah. Giants are under a lot of pressure as well and they sort of looked a little bit more like the Giants of old overall do you think the Giants can bring that form again this week and upset Sydney who are one of the form teams of the comp potentially they made them light work in the preseason not that that means much but in a in a derby that I don't know there is a little bit of history there like there's always been a bit of a back and forth it's gonna be a hard game to predict and yeah GWS coming back into the forms makes this a lot harder if the best GWS turns up against this uh, this Sydney side that have been performing week in week out it's going to make for a great game very hard to choose now that I think about it but just based on form I'll back in Sydney 11 points yeah I do hope the Giants do bring that kind of performance to the game I think it'll yeah. be a really uh, interesting game to watch overall though Sydney's form's hard to go past I think mm-hmm. I think they'll win this by 17 points next up we have Carlton versus Port Adelaide I believe it'll be the first time these two meet since uh, Robbie Gray broke Carlton hearts last year so uh, maybe a little bit of feeling in this one in the same way that Carlton maybe had a bit of feeling with Frio get out of it I'm sorry Carlton notched uh, a couple of wins in a row now against Gold Coast and Fremantle <laughs> the real titans of the competition <laughs> um, but, and I think the defence is holding up really well and um, yeah we're starting to see them return to some form that we maybe expected pre-season yes, sir. Um, and Port Adelaide had a really good albeit bruising win over the Tigers had a couple of casualties and Dersman and Butters probably looking at 10 to 12 weeks uh, mm. on the sidelines or something like that So that hurts my feelings yeah I think Butters in particular is like one of their better or more important players as well. So he's really good. Have the Blues turned a corner? And uh, do you think at the MCG they are a good chance to win this? So they went down a dark alleyway. And they bumped into Richmond and Collingwood. And they're like, oh God, oh God. And they like walked past it. And they got beaten and bruised. And then they like turned onto the main street. They're like, oh, finally. We've got fucking Fremantle. <laughs> we've got Gold Coast. And then like the fucking roads blocked off. And there's another dark alleyway. And it's Port Adelaide. That's the way I see it. Um, what was your question? <laughs> 
Who's going to win? <laughs> <laughs> Port Adelaide by... I reckon they'll get it done. Port by 25. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm leaning towards Port here as well. I think what will play maybe in Carlton's favour is the fact that uh, Port were really pushed to the line last week. Have a couple of injuries. Although I believe it's going to be an eight-day break. So um, if they recover well, I'll say Port Adelaide win this by uh, 21 points. But I think it'll be a good game. Brisbane is then playing Essendon at the Gabba. And I believe Brisbane torched them last year. I remember we live streamed yeah. that. And that was an absolute stinker of a game. But uh, i got a feeling this might be a little bit closer. I've kind of built up every game is a bit closer at the moment. Yeah. But I think the form lines still over here are, are kind of intercepting a little bit. Bombers looked hot again, like I said, with a really good performance in Sydney, um, which is a tough trip. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think they've got a bit of confidence about them now. And I, d- I don't know if they're like finals material but they're playing like that right now but who knows if they can sustain that mm. and then the, the Lions have had a tough fixture that's yeah. it one and three uh, should have been two and two um, but obviously haven't played in Queensland since round one um, and they've played some tough opponents in like Sydney Geelong and the Bulldogs um, to name a few so I did think that the Dons were probably like harsh in terms of the betting it's yeah. $3.65 so yeah. Brisbane heavy favourites what, what are your thoughts on this game? Yeah Essendon could come in and win this mm. I, I don't think that's out of the picture, but Brisbane have had the hardest draw in the competition, finishing second. The, the teams that they've played and being kicked out of Queensland, just about it's it's not something a good start for the Lions. So it's hard to go off. This is on paper their easiest fixture so far this season. Chuck on a condom, safe tip. We're gonna go Brisbane by. 29 points, but I have been impressed with the last two rounds from Essendon. They're playing with a bit more confidence after getting smacked about the first couple rounds. So, good on Essendon, but yeah, still a young side. Brisbane are established. They'll get the job done. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think Essendon, uh, are, like I said, really impressive form at the moment. I could see them bringing like, a really high-level uh, performance in this game. But the Lions are finally back at home. They'll be kind of seething that they've only had one win um, so far. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to tip the Lions to win by, yeah, maybe about four goals. But an interesting question is the loser will be one and four. If you count the Lions' season over being like between six to eighth, like if they don't make the top four, they kind of can't like meet their objectives for the year, which yeah. would have been to contend. And then Essendon, their, their pass rate would be like, you know, pushing for finals. Mm-hmm. So do you think at one and four the loser here is like their season's over? Well, I didn't think Essendon were going to be a top eight contender at all. Mm. So in my mind, it's pretty much been season over since the get-go for Essendon. (laughs) But no, much more important game for Brisbane. They're hungry. They need some meat. Yeah, I think one and four would be hard to overcome for the Lions. Yeah. Um, Essendon is a bit of a mixed bag, so who knows, but yeah. Next up, we have Adelaide hosting Fremantle at Adelaide Oval. Um, I could see this game being one-sided with the the form that Adelaide's played. Um, (laughs) Tex is still the man, leading the Coleman, 20 goals in four games. Um, And then some of the youngsters are really coming to fruition, so to speak, Um, with Lockie Scholl picking up 31 touches, seeing some good performances from guys like uh, Schoenberg as well, the youngster, and then uh, um, young uh, Sam Berry as well has been Mm -hmm. fairly prominent for a youngster. Fremantle, on the other hand, um, had a fairly solid win against the Hawthorne side that was fairly competitive it wasn't a terrible game I don't think I know you were there uh, they sit 2-2 two and two and you know not mathematically like really that far behind the finals I think they're sit- sitting ninth. but yeah. Adelaide 3-1 and one, looking very strong what chance do you give your boys this week? I give us a 25% chance of winning this game 25 that's not bad yeah we usually crumble under the pressure of teams that play with a high intensity and really press you up the ground pretty sloppy defensively like when we turned the ball over our defense wasn't set up against Hawthorne it wasn't a good performance against Hawthorne even though we did get the job done on paper at the start of the season you go yeah we'll go to Adelaide we'll get a win we'll bank that but the way Adelaide have been playing it's hard to just do that so I don't want to have any faith because faith is what kills you (laughs) (laughs) that's good advice kids I'll just add as well Heath Chapman from our draft he was our top pick in the draft this season uh, last year and he's been our best probably defender this year he's been wow. our most consistent so shout out to Heath Chapman could go either way and every time I have faith in Dockers they lose so I'll just tip Adelaide winning by 28 points yeah fair enough I think Adelaide's form line is too hard to overlook at the moment they haven't really looked poor in any game they got yeah. done by Sydney but it was still a fairly good game in that, in that both teams are good so uh, I just can't go past the Crows here I think they're going to win by 33 points uh, Fremantle not without their chances yeah. um, but you know yeah, I, I can see us winning because our midfield just gets clearance, clearance, clearance. Yeah. But. Next up, we venture to the MCG as Hawthorne take on Cade McDonald's Melbourne Footy Club. Um, Hawthorne, like we just touched on, sort of pushed Fremantle all the way. Uh, came back from uh, like five goals down in that second term. Pushed Fremantle fairly deep, I would have to say. 
gross. Some promising signs. I like. I, they nearly beat Geelong the week before, albeit they're not playing well. But I think Hawthorne have been competitive. I think there's, there's promising signs there. That GF kid um, yeah. really starting to make his mark on the competition looks really promising. He, well. he really stood out for Hawthorne yesterday. I think he was their best player on ground. Yeah, right. And Tommy Mitchell as well, back to his uh, ball-winning best somewhat. So, um, yeah, Hawthorne ticking along without looking amazing. And then you got Melbourne, who sit 4-0. And a real good opportunity to go 5-0 and here. Looking really organized down back um, and threatening forward. And, you know, they're missing key forwards. But also Stephen May, May has been ruled out for a month now as well. So maybe a bit of a threat to their structure. But uh, do you think the Ds, from what you've seen, are a real deal with top 14? I think they can make the top four. Maybe not like a solidified, deadly team in the top four. Like, oh, we're playing the Ds. Like, you fancy your chances against the Ds because mm. they just haven't been consistent over the years. But... In terms of this game, I would put my house on Melbourne winning this game. Mm. I just think they're way too uh, defensively solid. I said on the Drew Footy Show, but the way they set up behind the ball, when the ball is on the wing or the half-back line, even in the pocket, like there is no targets to go for when you're an opposing side playing against Melbourne. We did speak about these players on the on the Drew Footy Show as well, but Fritch has been firing with the forwards out, and uh, Kaiser Pickett has been an absolute highlight reel. I just see Melbourne winning. To be honest, Hawthorne didn't really offer much against Frio except for punching up Andrew Brayshaw. So, fuck you, Hawthorne. The poos and the wees. Melbourne will win this game by 36 points. I tend to agree. I think Melbourne is uh, a comfortable favourite here. Um, and I think it's a golden opportunity to go 5-0, and which is perfectly why they would probably drop it um, yeah. based on previous years. No, I, I, think, I think they're looking fairly solid. I think their opponents haven't been the most difficult so far, yeah, but they fair. also haven't put a foot wrong either. So, yeah, I think they should... They should do Hawthorne by about four goals. The final game of the round is uh, the true blockbuster, as we say every round, but Geelong is playing North Melbourne at GMHBA <laughs> Stadium, so a real recipe for a stanker. On the plus side, though, which might make it a little bit more watchable, Dangerfield returns to the side, yeah. along with Jeremy Cameron. He should be in for his first game for the footy club, so firepower coming back to a side that's looking a little bit stale. Spicy um, dynamic coming through. Exactly right. And, uh, yeah, obviously the Cats got done by Melbourne last week and looked pretty underwhelming, and mm-hmm. then, you know, scraped through against Hawthorne, probably should have lost to the Lions, and then got done by Adelaide as well, so um, overall, like unconvincing form line from Geelong, but that star power is pretty hard to overlook. Uh, and then North Melbourne, what can you really say about a side <laughs> that hasn't really got close to winning a game yet? Horrible performance against the Dogs, backed up by what I said was a winnable game for them against Adelaide. Like when they're playing at home, the team should should lift. And you know, I, I look, they they did in that third quarter. I think they yeah. hit the lead by three quarter time, but then lost the game by seven goals. So <laughs> um, there's there's not a whole lot of positives for North at the moment, uh-huh. other than maybe some some kids getting opportunities. But uh, it's yeah. going to be a long year for North. To what extent is there any upset this week? None. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a bloodbath, you'd think. Yeah, I mean the form line of Geelong hasn't been suggesting that they're going to put a team to the sword. But when you get Patrick Dangerfield and Jeremy Cameron yeah. back, I mean... It's a good warm-up game for him. Yeah, legit. It's literally like a bit of match sim. All right, boys, let's show up at home and just run circles around these children, these amateur children. They're going to smack them. This could be dirty, I reckon. If Geelong have their head screwed on, if they're serious, they will come out and absolutely batter this North Melbourne They'll side. They'll be like, gee, why are these training cones wearing North Melbourne jumpers? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? They're like, Geelong need a big... Result. They are playing the worst team in the comp. They have the firepower to be able to beat the best teams in the comp. They need to make a statement here, Geelong. And I think they should. I'm going to tip them to win by 107 points. Wow, that's a, that's a bold statement. Um, yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree that this is a game where they need to play themselves back into form. They got West Coast the following week, um, which they, again they'll see is very winnable. But as bad as West Coast were last week, I think I would almost give us a decent chance against Geelong at yeah. the moment, and that's that's how average Geelong's looking. But look, I'll, there's no chance really they're going to drop this game. I'll, that would be the shock of the season for me so far. I think uh, shock of the decade. There's been shocks uh, a plenty in 2021, but this North Melbourne aren't offering any though. Yeah, at GMHBA true. Stadium where they once kicked one goal eight, so it's it's <laughs> tough for travelling teams. Geelong's going to win this by. I'll say like 38 points. Ah, you're yeah. a virgin. Yeah. <laughs> As we do every week, Drews, let's nominate an upset of the week. Who are you thinking? GWS against Sydney. Me too. Nice. I got a Malteser. Ah, um, I like Maltesers. They're one of the better chocolates. They're decent. Sometimes I bite half of them and I suck the malt out. Yeah, that's that's fun. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> this is my, my one last week was ruined by Collingwood losing to GWS and mm. my West Coast. So yeah. that didn't come through. This one's only paying $8.94 and it's an eight-legger. So I've got yeah. Richmond to beat St. Kilda, West Coast to beat Collingwood, Bulldogs to beat Gold Coast, Sydney to beat GWS, Port to beat Carlton, Brisbane to beat Essendon, 
Melbourne to beat Hawthorne and Geelong to beat North Melbourne. I did include the Dockers game. And that's only paying $17.88 for $2. So in theory, this round is uh, fairly straightforward, sport, uh, sports bets suggesting. That definitely won't come in though. That One of those results yeah. won't come through. Mm, exactly. And we're all going to be shocked. But if they do... Metro's entry on you. Lads, 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 lads. All right, that wraps up just the tips for round five. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think of our tips, as you so often do. Um, but also let us know your tips as well for this round, unless you're competitive at the top of the ladder and you don't want to give away your tips. But equally, I just I just want to hear what you guys think about the upcoming games. Uh, go check out Drewsy's channel for the Drew Footy Show. We do a weekly wrap on the previous round, which should now be on YouTube. Yes. We upload around the same time each week. So go check that out. And of course, our sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com. Thanks, guys. It's been real. It's been good. It just hasn't been real Real good. good. Nice. We didn't time that. No.